and ask everyone to rise for a moment of silence. And I'd ask you to uh, consider the devastation and the loss of life um, during that uh, hurricane season of um, Dorian. Thank you. Please be seated. Prior to um, public session, the um, committee uh, met in uh, camera and discussed uh, three items. Uh, first of all, uh, the disposition of land at 150 Emerson Lane, and that report was received for information, um, as is um, number 3.3. Um, sorry, number 3.2 was received for information and direction was given um, to, to move on with that on the next steps. And um, I'd like to announce um, the Township Committee appointments that Julie Harris be appointed to the Scugog Accessibility Advisory Committee, that Stephen Rowe be appointed to the Scugog Heritage Advisory Committee, and that any remaining vacancies continue to be advertised for recruitment. May I have a mover, please? Councillor Watton, Councillor McDougall, questions or comments? All those in favour? And that is carried. And thank you to all those that um, applied and uh, wish them luck and uh, hope that they will apply again to those committees or to other uh, committees as vacancies occur. I read that one too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you. Um, on the first one of uh, Emerson, uh, 150 Emerson Lane, uh, the sale of land adjacent to 150 Emerson Lane, described as Part One Road Allowance between Concession Nine and Concession Ten, and Part Three Part Lot Seventeen Concession Ten, on the draft reference plan appended as Attachment One to the owner of 150 Emerson Lane, Nestleton, in the amount of five thousand and twenty dollars, be approved that the sale be conditional upon this parcel of land being consolidated with 150 Emerson Lane Nesselton to create a single property and that the township clerk be instructed to prepare the necessary documents to complete the transaction and the mayor and clerk be authorized to sign any such documents. That was the first item on the Committee of the Whole in camera. May I have a mover for that, please? Councillor Kiesebrink, Councillor McDougall, questions or comments? All those in favour? And that's carried. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, there were some uh, disclosures, pecuniary interest um, given at the beginning of the, the meeting before the uh, before we went in camera, um, and that is um, uh, point, uh, 9.2.5, the exercise, oh, oops, sorry, not that one. Um, what is it? There was two. Oh. The uh, uh, councillor Watton declared a conflict of interest on 3.2 of the uh, in-camera session, which was a disposition of land um, on the Island Road and Stevenson Point Road. Um, a relative is uh, was the applicant. Um, and uh, councillor uh, Brown uh, noted a conflict on nine, number 9.3.4. Um, and that has to do with uh, cannabis stores, and uh, Councillor Brown has uh, investment in such, in that, in that uh, category. So, any other declarations of pecuniary interest in nature thereof? Seeing none, uh, announcements from Council. Councillor Watton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just like to announce or remind everyone that on October 5th, Car Rate Sports and Rec will be hosting their 21st annual uh, fall festival and chili cook-off. Uh, it runs from 12 till 5. Entry fee is $5 per person, and there's uh, things for the kids to do, plus the chili cook-off and the car show and a barbecue and so on. I hope some people can make it. 
and it would be really cool if our council could put in chili this year. Since last year it was the, uh, the uh, candidates competition. So. Thank you. Well, I think that we need a captain to, um, to organize a chili night. Councillor Kiesebrink. Thank you, Madam Mayor. On Friday, September 13th and the 20th from 10 to 3 o'clock, there's a free workshop called Growing Your Farm Profits. It's at the Nestleton Community Center. And it's for people that are interested in opening a farm business. Um, it's uh, hosted actually by Ontario Soil and Crop Association, so you can call them if you'd like to participate. It's 800-265-9751. Um, it's going to be an interactive workshop followed by a one-on-one -on -one review meeting where you can assess your business management practices, uh, determine priorities, and also learn about cost-sharing opportunities. And then on Tuesday, September 17th, there's a free biosecurity workshop um, for generic livestock at the Nestleton Community Center. Same group, but it's learning more about on-farm biosecurity best management practices. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor McDougall? Yes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for supporting the uh, 160th, 66th annual Port Perry Fair. Uh, that was 166. It was a great event held by all, uh, Demolition Derby, uh, FMX Motocross, a great concert, and a uh, great rodeo, of course. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you. It was a great event. Uh, Councillor Guido and then Councillor Brown. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate United Way for their kickoff for their donation um, campaign. We had the tour to Perry here last Thursday. Um, very proud that Council had a team in this year. 50% of us did great, the other 50% <laughs> not so good. I won't mention which of the 50% that let the team down, but anyways, next year we will hold tryouts. Um, <laughs> two other events that we are very proud of in this community is the Winding Roads Festival, which um, or Winding Roads Music Festival, which is September 21st with George Canyon as a musical uh, entertainment, as well as the Tyler Hansen Street Hockey event, uh, September 28th to 29th at the Boss Independent Parking Lot. Um, both of those, de uh, you can find details for both of those events on uh, their various websites and tickets are on sale now and there's still tickets available. Perfect. There's still tickets available. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Guido, and thank you for captaining our, our team. Um, I don't know if there's any plans because uh, I understand that there's um, a concern that um, there was def uh, faulty um, tricycles involved and I don't know if you're looking for a rematch or... <laughs> But I'll, I'll, I'll leave that in your hands and those grumpy people that uh, let us down. Thank you, Councillor Guido. Councillor Brown. Through you, Madam Mayor. A, uh, what's the saying? A lousy craftsman blames his tools. Isn't that how it goes? Something like that. I'm directing that, I'm directing that at Ian and Angus. That's, a, that's what <laughs> Jana was talking about. Uh, Margie's here, so I'd like to get this in for her and for everybody who's going to be involved. And hopefully there'll be a lot more in the future that Tyler Hansen Memorial uh, Street Hockey Tournament is the 28th and 29th of this month at the Voss lot. How many years, Margie? Okay, so there you go. So fourth year, bigger and better. Teams of 15 are encouraged to apply. There's still room. Thank you. Okay, anything further? Councilman Google. Just one more. Um, the Terry Fox run, I believe, is this Saturday, uh, September the 5th. 15th at uh, the Port Perry Fairgrounds. I think there's a 1, 5, and 10K category. Dogs are welcome, I think I saw. Um, I hope to see people there. I know I will be there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was sure a short summer, but uh, very busy uh, with activities in Scugog Township. We are a tourist destination, and that was very evident in the amount of events that, uh, that were here over the summer. So uh, thank you all for attending those many events, and, uh, and welcome back, everybody and staff as well. I hope everybody had an enjoyable and safe summer. And uh, we're ready to uh, rock and roll. I know the staff has, is, is, despite um, holidays, uh, staff has been very, very busy uh, doing reports and working on, uh, on the business of the township. So thank you very much to staff for all your hard work over the, over the summertime and to counselors as well. Um, any announcements from staff? Would you like to, do you have any to start, uh, Mr. CAO, or? 
Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I do, in fact. Uh, I'd like to speak briefly about the Feed the Need Food Donation Challenge. And uh, this challenge is part of the National Hunger Action Month. And the Township of Scugog uh, is participating with the our fellow Durham municipalities and the municipality of Durham in a food drive challenge to raise awareness uh, and to uh, collect food and funds to help fight hunger in the community. Uh, the winner of the challenge will be awarded to the municipality who donates the most food and weight. And uh, local municipalities are also pitted against the region and, and against each other. Um, collection points have been established uh, and set up at the Municipal Office Fire Hall and our arenas. Um, donations will be gladly accepted from councillors, staff, the public, and any businesses that would like to uh, help in this regard. If you'd like to give cash, we'll take cash uh, for the municipality. Uh, each dollar collected uh, equates to three pounds of food. Um, the donations collected in Scugog will uh, be provided to Operation Scugog, our local food bank. So they'll stay in the community. Uh, challenge started on September the 4th and it ends on September the 17th. So please participate in our Feed the Need Challenge. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr. CAO. And I, I know that our community is very supportive of uh, of Operation Scugog, but we're kind of behind the eight ball as far as competing with other municipalities because of our low population. But um, let's hope that uh, the spirit of this community, um, you know, in, in their support for Operation Scugog continues and we'll have a good showing in this contest at the end. Uh, further announcements from staff? Councillor Coleman, or Councillor Director Skolman, Coleman. Thank you, Mayor Drew. As you said, staff have been very busy over the summer. Um, there's a report on item 9.2.5 where there's seven contracts that have been awarded over the summer. And there's also two other contracts that we had out that are we're not recommending be awarded. One is for Marshall Road through Epson. And the reason we're not recommending award is that the unit rates were about 200% more than they typically are. And we attribute this to the time of year, the fact that we only got uh, two bids and the current market conditions. So that project, we're recommending that we re-tender it in January for construction starting in May 2020. And similar to that, the sidewalk project, the infill project, um, the, we tendered that over the summer, but the rates came in about 150% higher than normal. So we're recommending for that one as well that we re-tender it in the winter so we get better rates and a better value for the township. That being said, we do have several projects that are going ahead. Cartwright West Quarter Line from Highway 7A to Church Street is underway. Uh, Aldred Drive on the island is also underway. And it's that same contractor when they finish Aldred will go to Caesarea and finish the third phase there. We also have um, the active transportation plan and the transportation master plan underway. We're in the public consultation phase right now. There is a survey online and an interactive map I encourage everyone to go to and fill out your comments there. Another project that has just started and we're doing public consultation is the Blackstack Arena, we're, uh, the replacement of the arena. We're meeting with the Blackstack Advisory Committee on Thursday. There's a public meeting scheduled for Thursday, October 3rd. And we've kind of compressed the whole project because we had very good news in the last couple of weeks that the federal and provincial government have introduced the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program grant applications for recreation facilities, and we have till November 12th to get an application in. So we are pushing forward fast and with this project so that we can get that in on time. And just one more announcement, the construction at REACH and Simcoe is continuing with, by the region, and we were successful in getting them to fund a crossing guard during the construction period at that intersection. So we have one new crossing guard at that intersection. We will also monitor how many students are crossing there. And if the volumes are sufficient, then we can bring a recommendation forward to make it a permanent budget, if budget allows us. That's all. Thank you. You, you have been busy this summer and your department. Thank you, Director Coleman. Uh, Director Heritage, you had something. And uh, Chief Bernie, you had something as well. Director Heritage. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm pleased to introduce Robin Prentice as the new manager of planning for the township. She's in the first row. Yay. Robin is a graduate from the University of Waterloo with an Honours Bachelor of Environmental Studies degree in planning. She's coming to Scugog from the town of Whitby where she was a principal planner. And prior to the town of Whitby, Robin was with the township of East Gwillimbury as a manager of planning. She has extensive experience in preparing policy reviews, processing development applications, and preparing numerous staff reports and presentations to council. Robin is a full member of both the Canadian Institute of Planners and the Ontario Professional Planners Institute and is a registered professional planner. I wish to welcome Robin to the Scugog team. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We all welcome you, Robin. It's a good news for your department, you, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, certainly in all of the township of Scugog. So welcome, Robin. We're glad to have you. Anything else, uh, Cap Director Heritage? Chief Bernie is next. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a, a number of items, and I, uh, I apologize. Um, this summer, we were uh, successful in uh, securing a new rescue boat, and we have put it into service. And with a, just a couple more items to uh, purchase, I'm sure we're going to come in under budget. Um, you have provided uh, the firefighters and the citizens with a reliable and multifunctional uh, vessel. Um, that I said, or as I said, uh, will uh, allow our firefighters to be quite safe out on the water in providing both emergency response and community services um, while we uh, do our duties. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, tonight, we will be, be performing our tanker shuttle accreditation. Um, that is the uh, uh, testing our abilities to deliver water, uh, approximately 200 gallons a minute for two hours. Um, in the Port Perry area. So we'll be running uh, Reach Street from the arena through to the Epson Public School um, starting at approximately 7 p.m. tonight. And if uh, everything goes well, we'll be reaccredited for another five years and then we'll begin the process of uh, accrediting the Caesarea area from the Caesarea Fire Station. Um, and uh, yeah, stay tuned with that one. Uh, staffing um, in midsummer, eight new recruits began to respond from uh, Station 62. And as I had suggested earlier, that brought our staffing levels up there to uh, 30 firefighters, uh, larger than Port Perry for the first time in several years. And uh, I'm quite proud of the, uh, the work they've been doing already. I believe within the first week or two, they were uh, faced with a structure fire. And, and that was when I was on vacation. And as I came back from vacation, there was yet another one. So, and uh, there was many of these new recruits there. So it was, it was nice to see. Uh, starting, September 11th, running through to September 15th, there will be the FireFit World and National Championships uh, hosted in Oshawa at the Legends Centre. Um, and why I bring that to your attention is because we will have some volunteer firefighters participating as a team at the FireFit Challenge. And I encourage you, if you're in the area and you have the opportunity, to uh, go and see them put uh, speed against their skills. It's, it's quite interesting. My son does it, and uh, I'm glad my son does it because this guy never will. <laughs> Uh, and lastly, lastly, I'm very excited to introduce to you Officer Christy Lynn Pankhurst. Uh, Christy Lynn was the steel of the summer, let me tell you. Uh, she joined our team in, uh, in uh, July of this year, or of the summer, um, resides locally, and uh, comes from a uniformed family. She's a second generation firefighter, and along with her partner, lived locally here. Um, Christy Lynn is an award-winning public, public educator and probably comes by that naturally, mom being a teacher's aide. Um, she can deliver in all three lines of defense, so not only public education, code enforcement, but she also has firefighting skills. So it's, she's a big part of our team when it comes to all hands on deck and, and performing for the community. And lastly, in the short time she's been here, what an impact on improving the fire safety in our community. And I uh, thank her for that. And Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Oh, thank you. And Christy, welcome. Uh, you are a valuable addition to, to our staff. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy being here with us. And uh, I think we're a great team. We're, we're a, a big family. Um, and that's, that's how we operate. So welcome. And Director Valentin. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wasn't sure you could see me over the chair there since they've moved my <laughs> position here. 
um, I just would like to announce that our budget season has started for 2020. And uh, for the month of September, we have our budget uh, survey that's posted online. It can be um, attained through our budget website, our SCUGOG website. There are also hard copies that are at the municipal office downstairs, uh, also available at, excuse me, at the library and at our recreation facilities. So I encourage everyone to participate and have your say as part of our budget. Thank you. Thank you. Any further announcements from staff? Well, thank you very much. It uh, certainly has been a very busy summer and onward and upward. So the next item on the agenda is delegations and presentations. And um, I'd just like to announce that the uh, four Scugog annual charity golf tournament is hosted by the Township of Scugog and raises funds for Scugog youth initiatives. And we're prepared to um, award some funds today. And um, I will just give you a little bit of background here. And uh, as we um, present these, I will ask uh, the recipients to come forward. Um, the Four Scugog Bursary Program continued at the Port Perry High School with three bursaries awarded, $1,000 each at the June 2019 commencement ceremony. And I'd now like to call on Margaret Ayers from Big Brothers Big Sisters. You've come forward. Sisters of North Durham and she is being awarded funds towards Think Feel Act, a program that assists children 9 to 12 years old who struggle with anxiety and face barriers due to their social cultural background, economic profile, and or personal challenges. The TFA program is offered in a school setting in Scugog. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Program. Um, it is getting a lot of attention right now. Even the kids during the school boards are working closely with them. We're hoping that this will be a program that we will be able to take right across the road. Um, so, in the next month or so, you'll see a lot of information coming out. We're hoping the newspaper about our program and helping to take that um, within our community. So, again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for all you do for our youth. Thank you. The Black Shop Skating Club um, is being awarded funds to assist with the skating program, teaching aids, supplies for incentive awards for participants, and the yearly carnival. And they're not able to be here today, but we wish them uh, all the best in their plans for the future, and congratulations. <laughs> the Lake Scugog Scissoria Regatta is being awarded funds to assist with their children's program at the annual event. Laura, is that <laughs> Congratulations. I love the shirt. Thank you. <laughs> it was a beautiful thing. 91 years. Yeah. Long time. Thank you so yeah. very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was a great event this year. Yeah. Over there for Sorry. Durham West for eight fundraising. Oh, oh, sorry. I forgot. There we go. Oh, That's where the name came. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Um, Precious Minds is being awarded funding towards establishing fitness zone gym club program in Scugog. This program will provide youth in Scugog with developmental disabilities the opportunity to utilize community resources, develop sustainable physical activity patterns, and build confidence. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Precious Minds is so proud to be celebrating its 20th anniversary of providing care, support, and hope to um, North Durham families. And this program we actually piloted in um, Uxbridge last year and it was very successful. So we're very excited to be bringing it uh, right into Port Perry this year. Thank you Great. again. Good luck. Thank you very much. 4-H Durham West is being awarded funding to assist with the 4-H Canada 2019 Summer Exchange Program, which provides youth the opportunity to explore Canada. The 4-H Durham West Club went to Alberta in July, and uh, a group uh, from Alberta will be uh, visiting us, if I understand. So, uh, Laura Campbell, Allison. Congratulations. 
Congratulations to all the recipients, and uh, just a reminder that the uh, oh, thank you, that the uh, for Scugog uh, Charity Golf Tournament is coming up. Uh, Lisa, what's the date? Next Thursday. Thank you. So I hope uh, if you haven't signed up your teams, better better get at it. Okay, moving along to the consent agenda. I have a number of items pulled. I think all that is left is um, 9.2.6, building permit activity, and 9.2.8, capital closing report. Can I have a motion to uh, receive and approve the recommendations? Uh, Councillor Watt and Councillor Brown, questions or comments on those two items? All those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. The first report um, is 9.2.1, and uh, uh, for, oh, sorry, 9.2.2, no, sorry, I'm gonna bring forward 9.2.1 um, for, uh, for information, and that was the Scugog Charity Golf Tournament proceeds, so receive for information. Well, uh, Councillor Watton and Councillor Keyes will bring all those in favor, and that's carried. 9.2.2. Sorry. I didn't know you said all the chicken go. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Uh, 9.2.2 um, is pulled by Councillor Watton and Councillor Kieserbrink. Councillor Watton? It's on, found on page 9. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, with respect to um, just the report and our our policy, I have I just had a question um, regarding uh, the first bullet point on page eleven. Um, it states that an always stop sign should not be used under the following condition. And the first bullet point reads, where the protection, protection of pedestrian school children in particular is a concern. And I, I was just wondering if the director could kind of explain that because it's, to me, it's a bit contradictory, so. <laughs> Through you, Madam Mayor, to the councillor. So this wording is taken directly from the Ontario Traffic Manual Book 5 for Regulatory Science. So it's not something that Skuka came up with. It's a common practice throughout Ontario. And I, I understand this is more, if, if it was a warranted stop sign, then it would be effective for the protection of children. But if it doesn't meet the warrant, then it creates a false sense of security for the children. So in this case, it is very close to another stop sign, and because it's not warranted, drivers might not come to a complete stop, and children might be at the intersection expecting that the vehicle will stop. So it might actually make the intersection less safe having an unwarranted stop sign than having um, just a two-way stop that's there today. Thank you. And um, also my other comment would be, I note that... Um, the policy is uh, a 2005 policy, um, and if I if I need to make a motion, you can let me know. But could I just ask that um, it be reviewed um, to make sure that all the everything in it is current to um, you know the Traffic Act and the Ontario OTM and and so on and so forth. Through you, Madam Mayor, to the councillor, the, the OTM book that it's based on is from 2001, and it has not been updated since that time. So we would be very unlikely to want to, we wouldn't want to put anything in our policy that wasn't supported by a higher authority. So I don't think that this time there would be any significant change to the policy if we did update the policy. So with the, um, so further to the OTM is the, um, the Transportation Association of Geometric Design Manual also that old? Do you know? You can um, let me know if, if you don't know the answer to that, but I'm just curious. I, I through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, 
I, I can double check that. I have those manuals in my office. I don't know the data on them off the top of my head. Uh, Councillor Kiesebrink and then Councillor Brown. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Mississauga has a policy as well um, that, uh, like an always stop warrant policy, uh, similar to, to Skugog's, but they do add an extra phrase in it. Um, so specifically along the point where we're talking about pedestrian and children's safety, they've added the phrase, since other means should be used to address this concern. So my question is, can you advise generically, not for the Mary John Street intersection specifically, but just generically, what would be the other means that we would use to address the concern of, of, of pedestrian safety um, where we wouldn't use a four-way stop? Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor. Actually, Mr. Saga, um, quotes closer to what this book said. So um, the book does say, sorry about that. It, it does add that where other means are not not tried. So it has that wording in the manual. So in this case, the accidents in 2011 and 2012 would be considered high frequency according to the, the standards. Um, and so staff at that time did look at it and the bump out was added because I believe that the sight lines at, it, at an intersection from people parking too close to the intersection was a large contributing factor to the accidents. So that another method was tried in that case and the accident rate seemed to have decreased significantly since that time. So there's an, a very good example of another, another means that can be done to reduce the frequency of accidents. Thank you, um, Director Coleman. So uh, a further, I, I would like to make a motion, um, and I think the OTM um, traffic, the Ontario Traffic Manual, right on page one, does make a statement that the OTM incorporates current best practices in the province of Ontario, that the interpretations, recommendations, and guidelines are based on many factors. However, no manual can cover all the contingencies or cases encountered. And it says specifically, the traffic practitioner's uh, fundamental responsibility is to exercise engineering judgment and, in and experience on technical matters in the best interests of the public and workers. The guidelines are provided in the OTM to assist in making those judgments, but they should not be used as a substitute. Um, so it does give a little bit of levity to, 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 uh, to the individual cases. Um, I would like to make a motion that we proceed with instituting an always stop control at Marion John Street for the following reasons. Um, given that Skugong Township downtown is predominantly a walking downtown with children, youth, and seniors, there's a lot of uneven hilly ground. Um, there's a rise from 255 to 259 meters um, going from Queen Street up to that intersection. I did see a senior citizen just yesterday do a complete face plant on the on the street, so um, it, it's just better to have you know lots of slow traffic. Um, but also, given that staff have already received a request, as you referred to, Director Coleman, um, regarding abnormally high collision frequencies and sightline issues, and recognizing that the township's installation of the bump out has reduced those uh, those collisions, but there were still three collisions in the last five years. Um, so, given that the township staff have already made decisions to install four-way stops based on concerns about safety of the intersection, and then given my further quote with respect to the judgment call that the OTM uh, doc, uh, manual documents, that's why I would like to make that motion that we go ahead and proceed in this, say, in this case and make a judgment call and go ahead and do a four-way uh, stop control. Thank you. Any comment on that? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor. I, I, um, there is there is some concerns. I, the manual does have some qualifications at the beginning of it, but I think it's important whenever possible that we do a consistent approach based by something that's been put together and, and been followed for a number of years. And there is a potential liability to the township should an accident happen and we put in an unwarranted always stop control. Um, and also we have to consider precedences. You, we, if we put this one in, you might have out the citizens across the community wanting always stops at many intersections. And that can lead to frustrated drivers, people not stopping at stop signs, people speeding between stop signs to make up the time. So there are other safety considerations that you need to consider before you put in an unwarned stop sign. So um, I have another couple of speakers, but I don't have a seconder for your motion. 
Um, did you, first of all, want to um, separate the recommendations to deal with uh, the Mary Street, John Street separately? Did yes, you? yes, Madam Mayor, if we could just extract that one piece. Okay, so did you wish to make a motion for the, the rest, endorsing the rest of the recommendations? Yes, thank you. Okay, so we'll get a seconder for that. Okay, so what we're doing is we're, we're removing uh, recommendation two and dealing with the rest. Okay, so do we have a seconder to, uh, well, I, first of all, we have to have a seconder to um, separate, do we? Uh, okay, Councilor Kiesemann, you're making a motion to separate. Okay, um, seconder, Councilor Guido. That's to separate recommendation two. All those in favor? Okay, thank you. Do you wish to make a motion to uh, endorse the recommendations one, three, four, and five? Okay, seconder? Councillor Brown? Questions or comments? All those in favor? And that's carried. So now, Councillor Kiesebrink, you wish to change recommendation number two. Would you word that recommendation for us, please? So I would like to, do you want me to read the preface or just the no, final just motion? No, motion. I'd just like to make a motion that we proceed with instituting an all-way stop control at Mary and John Streets. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any comments or questions? Because I have a comment. Councillor Brown. Through you, Madam Mayor, I'm a huge fan of four-way stops. Um, Director Coleman, you, you mentioned, I think there were something like, was it 12 accidents in one year before at this intersection before uh, things got the straightened out a little bit or maybe not straightened out with the bump up? Was two it something like 12 in one year? 12 in two years. 12 in two years. So it's it's been known to be a bad intersection. We have done something about it. But I agree with my councillor friend and my, the right of me here that we do need to make sure that uh, we put a four-way stop in here. And I don't. if it's not the last one, that's not going to bother me. I find it rather counterintuitive and I respect your judgment immensely, but I find it rather odd that a four-way stop would be more unsafe than a two-way. I have a hard time believing that. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor Guido? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, when Perry and Mary used to be part of uh, Ward 2, um, a petition by the neighborhood um, that lived in there back in 2015-16 was um, provided and submitted based on the fact that they lived there and the amount of frequency or near misses that happened at that intersection was large. And I know, Director Coleman, a few years ago I had asked you for stats on accidents and it baffled me that the amount that Durham Police had recorded versus what people sending me pictures of accidents didn't necessarily jive with what had been reported. And I mean, that's here nor there at this point. But I do have a question regarding our policy and the, the, the accident number. Is that from the OTM as well, as far as criteria, when you're creating a criteria that comes from the OTM? Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, yes, it's directly from the OTM. Okay. And then my next question is, do, do they, does the OTM speak differently to rural versus urban? And if there would be differences to the amount of pedestrian or cyclist traffic in one area versus the other? To you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, it doesn't speak to rural and urban. It does speak to um, arterial and major roads versus minor roads. Because our policy, in our purpose, it says in determining the installations of an all-way stop sign at rural or urban intersections, and we can appreciate that there would be different amount of there would be a different volume of traffic at a, at a urban versus a, a rural potentially with pedestrian traffic. Um, and I, that is my next question as to why pedestrian counts are not included in a warrant. Um, in this because in, while our policy or the OTM says that it's not for um, traffic or safety of children crossing, um, why would we not want to consider traffic counts of pedestrians in the warrant? Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, our warrant policy does not include pedestrian or vehicle counts. Um, the OTM does and we looked at it quickly and I believe that it wouldn't meet the OTM traffic volumes 
So we would have less um, warrants for all way stops if we use the OTM numbers for those. Okay, well, I, I just wonder because it is quite an outdated, the OTM and, and active transportation is such a, um, um, it's prevalent in all of our municipalities as a, a goal and a strategy to achieve that I would think that they would want to try and put into their policies. That being said, can, can we go back to the statement about it making it less safe for children or anyone crossing if there is a four-way? How, how is their explanation behind that? Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, I, I said potentially less safe because if, a, if you're expecting a vehicle to stop and then you just walk across the street as if they're going to stop and they don't stop, that's when it becomes less safe. But I guess that could be said with any stop sign, whether it's a four-way or two-way or three-way, the expectation always that the car would adhere to the rules of the road. Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, when it's a warranted situation, drivers can see the need more for the stop sign, so they're more likely to follow it. When it's, you know, like there's one 115 meters away from there, so they might not feel like there should be another stop sign right away, in which case they might roll to it rather than come to a complete stop. Then, again, they wouldn't be following the rules of the road, whether they feel it's warranted or not. Thank Correct. you. Uh, okay, I've come to the end of my speakers. Um, I just have one comment, it's actually just a caution, um, that we, we have to treat um, adding four-way stops very, very cautiously because it does put us in a libelous uh, situation uh, when uh, putting in a four-way stop when it's not warranted. So, you have a question? Okay, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm not sure I, our official plan speaks about road classifications and it speaks about arterial, collector, and local. Um, so I'm not sure in terms of major and minor uh, arterials, but would this be a local road? Through you, Madam Mayor. Mayor Councillor, yes it is. And so I think our official plan talks to local roads, the purpose being to access individual properties, is that correct? Through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, the Councillor, I don't have the official plan in front of me, but I, that sounds accurate. So we have a petition that was circulated with 30 residents' names on it who are local to that area who are asking for a four-way stop. Would that be a reasonable consideration for them for accessing their property since they're concerned with their localities? Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, this petition that um, Councillor McDougall is referring to was submitted in 2016. I was not working at the time, but I believe that staff did a warrant study at that time, and they came to the same conclusion as we've come to now, that it wasn't warranted and it wasn't installed at that time. It, it does show that there is interest in the community for it, but we prefer to follow our policies and, and, and Ontario manuals and, and follow that procedure rather than just following public demand. Further through, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, what would be the reasoning for perhaps not the, the accidents that uh, Councillor Guido had been forwarded pictures of previously not showing up in this warrant? I'm not exactly sure why we wouldn't have seen those in the accident counts. Is there any reasons? Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, I, I can't speak to why accidents aren't reported. Um, all I know is that for consistency, we follow, we obtain records to the region of Durham from their police services so that we know a consistent method for deciding how many accidents were there. So I, through, through you, Madam Mayor, I believe that for an accident report to be created, there needs to be in excess of $2,000 damage to the vehicles or vehicle. Um, so it's possible that they may have dealt with this themselves or the police may have not decided that it wasn't worth reporting. Is that correct? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, I, I understand you had a conversation with the RPS and that's the information they gave you. So, so my, my thought is, is that it's perhaps that we haven't actually seen the number of near misses that are occurring at this intersection through the accident reporting that we're getting. Well, to be fair, Councillor McDougall, that would be true of any intersection, not just this one. So they're, what the director is saying is they're using consistently the records from the region and the RPS. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's all.
Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just would like to circle back to liability. What, uh, refresh my memory, what is the potential liability if the township installs an unwarranted four-way stop? What's the liability to the township? So one of the reasons the OTM, the Ontario Traffic Manuals, were created was to find, provide consistent guidelines for every municipality to follow. And if you follow them, they give you a good, strong defense when you, if an accident occurs to, to prove well, that you've done things in a consistent and defendable approach. If you don't go with them, if you, if you install something that's considered unwarranted and against your policies, and if something does happen, then there could be potential liability to the township. For having an uh, unwarranted stop sign, if there is an accident, someone could come to the township? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to the councillor, in any accident case, the township can be called in and a claim could be made against the township. Um, our defense is better if we follow our policies and the standards that have been established. So that would be for any decision that council makes that goes against policy, then it opens up liability, or is this just specific to anything in an OTM or a traffic accident? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, it's Yes, if you go against policies, it could, it, I'm not a lawyer, it's hard for me to speak exactly the impacts, but your best defense is always to, follow, to have a, a procedure and to follow your procedure. Thank you. Anything further? Seeing none, the motion, Councillor Keesbring. Um, so our staff, um, have recommended that an always stop control be implemented at Marsh Hill Road in Scugog Line 12. That was a scenario where the overall warrant um, was a no, um, but the decision was made because they wanted to ensure uh, public safety. Um, and I would just like to uh, restate that I, I feel like the safety parameters with this intersection is really paramount, especially given the access to quite a number of you know, schools and people walking in that location. Thank you. Anything further? The motion is on the table. All those in favor? Sorry? I'm sorry, I thought you got a secondary. I thought, uh, Councillor Guido, did you not second that motion? Second to the separation. Of okay, the I'm sorry, do I have a seconder then, please? Councillor McDougall. All those in favor? That's carried, thank you very much. Thank you, Director Coleman. Moving on to 9.2.3, single-use plastics report. Councillor Ross, page 21. Great. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, a point of clarification, just if I could, first to uh, Mr. Belfry um, and Director Coleman. On page 23 at the the last paragraph, um, halfway through the first, first sentence. I'm just going to read it out and then point to it. It says, um, and as not to disrupt the contract operations of the concession stand and the existing contract between the township and Lee Lu corporate, staff are only recommending the new signage incurring the, encouraging the use of water bottle fill stations be placed in the facilities. That's just brought a little bit of confusion to me in the report, which um, I, I think we're pointing in the right direction. Um, we're talking about reducing single-use plastics, um, but then there's also uh, speak of the, con the canteen, the Lilu corporate, and how they have a lot of single-use plastics. Is this to mean that uh, any signage or education to the public will not be placed around the concession stand so as not to affect their sales, or am I interpreting that incorrectly? Uh, through the mayor, the councillor, that would be. We haven't determined the exact locations of the signage yet, but we probably would not encourage putting signage directly affecting their sales right next to the concession booth. What we would do in would be put more signs. We don't have any signs right now at this time pointing to our water bottle fill station, so it, we would really ramp that up as you enter into the building from all access points. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, just further to that, um, 
I understand this is a recommendation that comes from the, uh, the advisory committee. Mm -hmm. And I applaud the advisory committee for, for bringing this on. I'm a little disappointed with the conservativeness and the narrow recommendation that exists here. Um, I feel like we've got, we're either going to talk about saving the world or we're going to save the world. And this is a lot of talking about it, but not really doing it. And I, I'd, I'd like to see before this is implemented a uh, conversation with Lilu Corporation to perhaps modify their existing business structure or whatever it takes. Because if, if we're saying we're going to reduce single plastics, but we're not going to educate the public at the point of sale, I understand there's a business model here, but I also, if we're going to say we're going to do something here, I feel like we should do something. And not, I don't want to jeopardize their business, but at the same time, by not doing that, I feel like we're not actually hitting the, we're not getting to the point that we are striving for from the committee. Um, it's a, it's a very safe and conservative initiative from the committee, um, but I'd like to see some recommendations on how the township can actually reduce single-use plastics and promote them through the community. Um, I don't know if that can be brought back to the committee to discuss. Uh, through the mayor and the councillor, in my experience of operating the concession stand for 10 plus years and the contracts that we used to have with Coke, now with that uh, Lilu has with Pepsi, there are a lot of single source bottles that are sold, not just water, but mm -hmm. pop, what have you. Um, her model within her contracts, knowing the contracts we used to have, would be quite significant to her. She's also at the same time operating at the Uxbridge Arena the concession stand. That's why it's more economically viable to her. My concern of going back in trying to renegotiate something with her, like with that, is at what point does it not become viable and then we're back to operating that booth when we worked for years to get out of that scenario as we were losing money. Like, as I said in the report, we drastically flipped from loss to getting revenue and that took a few years to get there. With that, going in there and asking her to renegotiate at this point when the other operations in Uxbridge that she's using isn't doing that would affect us. I also don't, there are many other scenarios within the corporation and not just specifically the arenas that are high end water bottle, like single source water bottle users. Like, I don't believe water is a high sale for her there. We do see that our water bottle fill stations are already used quite a bit. And the users that are in there do know about it. So like, we do have the counts in there of how much water bottles we have actually reduced. I would say there's other avenues other than the arena facility, which through events or what have you in others that can reduce single source water bottles in other ways than the arena, than taking on a contract that we have right now and trying to renegotiate it or lose revenue that way. So I'd be, that's why I know it seems conservative, but that's the overall lying reason for conser being conservative is our contract in that booth and knowing how long it took us to get there to get that and going in two years into it and saying, let's relook at this when the economics might not make sense to her in the end then. No, I, I can appreciate that, absolutely. And like I said, I'm, my intention is not to put somebody out of business, but we're having, you know, 2021 with the current federal government is a as I mentioned in the report, is a complete ban on single-use plastics. As a township, it's going to, the, the lion's share is going to fall on us to make that happen. It's one thing to talk about it. It's one thing to say we're going to put signs up, but they're going to be behind this curtain and you can't see them. Um, it's another to actually make, to be proactive and to, to take the bull by the horn. So um, my, I would just like to see them come to the table. As you've said, there are a number of, you know, Pepsi Cola, I could be getting this wrong because it's a Coke product, but Montpellier does a can now of water, mm -hmm. you know, and that's kind of the move away from plastics. If that could be incorporated with her model, understanding that she has three years left in her contract and we don't have the authority to tell her what she can sell, yeah. but at the same time, we have the responsibility to this community to move away from single-use plastics and if we have to wait for every contract to come up without educating people. At the end of the day, I think the point is if we could bring that business into the conversation a bit closer to see if, if there's movement if you know and we can help promote those multi-use plastics thank you anything further councillor brown through you madam mayor uh, mr belfry 
Do we have a, a, a water bottle station in, in this building? Do you know? Uh, do we have, do, can people walk in off the street? Why not? This should be the first place that we start. Uh, through the mayor to the councilor, I don't think we do. Um, as this building's not under my administration, I would pass that on to uh, the building department who is in charge and they could probably look at that for their budget. Or Carol can answer it. <laughs> through you, Madam Mayor, the councilor, we do have three locations that I'm aware of in this building where you can refill a water bottle um, with large jugs that are refillable. They're not in the public areas, except for the kitchen right off here, which really is in a public area. But staff in this building can definitely refill bottles. Uh, subsequent, if I may, well, that's great for staff, but we're trying to educate the public. So I think we need to look at uh, whether we're going to put one in this building or not. And I don't want to stop there. The BIA wants something done about single-use plastics too. So I'm uh, part of the BIA board and that I'm just saying this for information. But they want something done too. Um, is there anything like this in the park, at Palmer Park? Do we have we have if refillable I, water I, stations? If I if I might, um, I know that uh, the goal is in 2021. Um, we can't ban anything right now because we don't have anything in place to take to take the place of that. Um, but uh, as a matter of fact, on my wish list for capital for this next budget year. I have asked for this type of thing, um, water filling stations in the park, so that we can say, at one point, we can say no more water bottles at functions in the park. You know, but we have to have things in place, and and this is this is a start, and I would think, uh, you know, next year if my suggestions and maybe others as well um, are accepted, uh, then you know we'll be moving towards the ability to totally ban them. Um, now I think we're all on the same page on this. Um, it's just that it, it may take a little while to make those significant changes. Well, and, and if, I, if I may, sorry. JP? Go ahead, JP. Oh, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And just to the point about this building, um, we don't use any single-use plastics to offer water here. So if I have a meeting with someone from the public, I'll offer them a drink out of a glass. So we don't use, there's no like alternative option. So as much as we don't have a filling station, any time that people come into this building and need a drink, we will offer them a glass of water opposed to any type of single-use plastic. Okay, and if I may, okay. I'm, I'm just with Councillor Ross on this. I think we can talk about it all day, but we need to get something done. That's why I'm asking these questions. So I understand that you have a plan in place or it's something that you want to bring forward, Your Worship, and I, mm -hmm. Madam Mayor, and I, I get that. But I do think that if we're going to take this seriously, that we have to act on it. I don't know that I want to put Lee Lu out of business either. I know her. I knew her from Uxbridge, too. She's a great lady, and she really helps. Um, but I do think we have to we have to be proactive, as Councilor Ross suggests, and we have to make sure that people know that we're acting on it. Thank you. Is it is it is it possible that we could speak to um, the uh, concession booth operator and and suggest this is the direction we'd like to take, and we'd like cooperation on this as much as possible? Would you think that uh, that would get us somewhere? Because I mean, obviously we can't. She's got a she's got a contract. <laughs> Um, so, you know, we can't force her into anything, but. Uh, to you, Madam Mayor, as I said in the report, we were planning to open just talks with her regardless about solutions, how quickly she moves on them. It's something to recommend her to look at her business model, perhaps when the contract's up and when her contract's up with Oxbridge to look at that model. Who knows, as Councillor Ross said, who knows whether what Pepsi may come in and change their vending with this legislation that's going to come down, they may come in and change their vending machines to cans at some point. Right now they're not, but that's something that's entirely possible too, so we could ask her to make herself aware of these issues and move forward looking at that, so. Does that help uh, Councillor Ross and Councillor Brown? If I may, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'd like to bring her on the conversation. And then, as the report says, we're, it says staff are only recommending the signage encouraging the use of water ball fill stations. I'd like to see those in a prominent spot where we can actually change the consumer's purchasing habits as opposed to a, a sign somewhere 
that's not going to affect anybody, which is the exact opposite of what we want to do. We want to affect p consumers' choice. So that, that's what I would like to see. Okay, thank you. Councillor Brown, is that? Worship, yeah. People look to us for guidance. They want us to, they want us to, if it's an issue of the day and it's an issue of the day, they want to see us do something about it. And they might not tell us that every day, but it's there. So, like I said, let's, let's act on it. Let's do something and let them know, let people know that we're doing something about it. Yeah, thank you. Good point. Uh, Councillor McDougall, then Councillor Guido. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for bringing this forward. And um, I'm happy to be part of the environmental committee that brought this recommendation forward. Um, looking down the list, and I see the environmental events initiative, um, not to focus strictly on the arena because the water bottles are used at so many other locations. The, the fair I celebrated, actually. You know, there's, there's water bottles used there. We have another partner as well, which is the region of Durham, which um, a whole reason why a lot of people will buy bottled water in Port Perry is what they feel is the, the uh, odor of our water. Personally, I don't have a problem with it, but... Um, I think in time as that's fixed, there might be opportunities for us to have, um, I want to say public drinking fountains, those are an issue as well, but at different locations in the community that will allow us to have people refill their water bottles. So, that's all. I think you'll see that on the wish list. And of course, you know, the, uh, the region is moving towards a new well to improve the quality, not the quality of the water, the quality of the water is fine, the aesthetics of the water. Um, you know, so, so that is coming. Anything further on this? Do I have a, oh, Councillor Guido, I'm sorry. Yes, I That's do. That's okay, remember. Madam Mayor. Um, thank you, uh, Councillor McDougall. That was part of my question. Um, Mr. Belfry, refresh my memory. The water bottle refill stations at both arenas, is there a filter on it or is it straight Port Perry water that's coming out? Uh, through the Mayor of the Council, it's straight Port Perry water and straight black stock or right. water. So I think in the Port Perry arena, based on my frequency there, um, the reason why people may opt to purchase rather than refill is because of the taste that some people experience with the water. Um, th that's just from, from feedback that, uh, well, I've heard. Um, on page two of four of your report, it says that the township discouraged the use of single, uh, of single use plastic bottles at all township events and township facilities. How are we planning on discouraging them? Like what, what is the action that we are doing to discourage? Uh, through the mayor and the councillor, that would come through education to the groups. Like right now, as the secondary part of that is to include on the permits, a notion about discouraging or encouraging the use. But we're not enforcing. So I can say to you, Mr. Belfry, or Jack and Jill tonight, it would be really nice if you didn't use plastic water bottles, but we don't do anything other than include these two lines in a contract or a user agreement. Correct. So perhaps back to what Councillor Ross and Councillor Brown were saying, it's great to say uh, when I'm coming in to get my permit that we really wouldn't like you to use water bottles, but I'm going to not listen to what you say likely and still get those water bottles. So perhaps it's that, uh, and leaving Mrs. Liu aside because um, that, that may be a different conversation, but perhaps where the enforcement or the more stringent action can be is when we are renting out our facilities and that's just part and parcel of, of, of rental now. Uh, through the mayor and councillor, I would say that's a minor component compared to the events in the parks in the summer, right? Like there are significantly large events in Skugog that, as Councillor McDougall referred to, that use single source water. Right, that bottles. you would have to get a permit for. Yeah, right. That that can be is whether that's probably through education through when the groups come to plan, do their yearly planning with the parks department. I don't want to speak too much for the parks department, but when they do that with them, that those conversations can start this year based on this, which probably haven't been to that level that you're looking for right, right. now. So as for our facilities, we encourage that. Um, I, there is, like obviously with Jack and Jill's, there's a lot of alcohol and things like that, but that's all recyclable and not plastic, but we can encourage them to find other means. And we can, do, we can start doing the same things like with our Sports Hall of Fame event and those kind of things where we look to other means. Very other than that, we have looked at options also for like our museum events, a museum facility, 
Fortunately, the museum water well has a high salt content in it, so we can't offer that as drinking water. It's actually posted for anybody that has heart conditions or anything like that not to drink the water. But we are, and staff have already talked about water fill stations through large jugs of water or for people to fill up on instead of selling, because we have sold the single water wells in the past and changing that up, so. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have your hand up again, Councillor McDougall? Sorry, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Just through to Councillor Guido. We struggled at the Environmental Committee for a very long time with the single-use water bottle issue for the reason that um, an outright ban, which I believe was implemented by Ajax and has been done by several other municipalities, took a large concentrated effort. And the concern was, was that um, if we brought forward the recommendation for an outright ban, that it might be difficult for us to obtain all at once. So the thought in the group was to move forward with discouraging water bottle and single use plastic use at this point in time. And I think the second part is, is at some point in time, move to a ban. Thank you, that's all. Uh, Councillor Watt. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I um, concur with a lot of the um, comments that have been made, but with respect to if we um, put it in a permit that, um, you know, they can't have single-use plastics. Is the expectation then that we would supply the water or will you expect the event planners to supply the water until such time as we had water filling stations? Because I think that opens up a whole other scope and um, I don't know if we as a municipality would be able to um, accomplish that as quickly as some of us are hoping. So I just wanted to put that out there for consideration as well. I think it's great that we're making the notion. Um, would love to see water fill stations in the parks and so on, but there's a lot of it, other parts to that, um, that that come into play in my opinion. So I just, I think this is a great start. I think by 2021, as, as you said, Madam Mayor, there will be more direction on it. At that time, the um, contract will also be up for renewal um, at the arena. So I think all these things are important that have been brought forward by, by everyone, but I do caution that we don't make it almost impossible for us to achieve some of our goals. And, and truly educating the public is one of the top ones that I think is an achievable goal. Thank you. Thank you. No further speakers. I don't believe I got a, mo a mover on this. So could I have a mover, please? Councillor Kiesebrink, Councillor McDougall. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favour? And that's carried. Thank you. Thanks for bringing this forward, Councillor Ross. Um, number 9.2.4 on page 27. Uh, Councillor Ross. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, through you to Director Coleman. Um, just a question, be brief here, just a question in regard to um, Platten Boulevard. The uh, recommendation is to reduce to 40 kilometers an hour on that road. Um, I spoke with the residents yesterday and this, and this morning in regards to what was coming ahead as they had shown a lot of concern over it, obviously, and how it kind of came to the table here. Is it possible to, um, I, I know we have raw data on it, to gain that raw data within a certain period, a very timely period, to reassess at some point and ask for your recommendations as to what time frame we're looking at to see if it has made a difference or if we need to look at it again to move to a 30 kilometer an hour zone. Through you, Madam Mayor, to the councillor. So you're asking that we implement the 40 kilometers and then we assess it to see if it's actually doing anything to change the speeds? That's right. So as it, just for my colleagues, as it stands now, this road, having walked it and seen it a number of times now, goes from two lanes, and I won't use the proper term, but down to a, a laneway, as they say, and um, with a recreation facility, a camper van and a marina on one side, um, it's quite quite busy. Um, and as we've seen, the signage is missing in certain spots, and it's you know, people walking on this and no sidewalks, so it's an issue. 
And right now, it is 30, the mean is 38. I'll just try to find it here. Um, 35. Sorry, 35 kilometers an hour, which is what people are driving now. And this is what Director Coleman and I spoke about this morning. So 35 kilometer an hour at the mean and 42 at the 85th percentile. And by the residents in there, it's seen at that level as being too high for the area. And we're talking about reducing it to 40 kilometers an hour. It's, un, it's, it's signposted all uh, recommended speed, which is um, a bit covered up right now. So my proposal is that you continue with the 40 as recommended by yourself, but that we reassess it. Because if we come back in a year and it's 35 kilometers at the 50th and 42, then we haven't dealt with the problem that's been assigned. So um, if we could add that to the list of traffic measuring so that we could see what it is, in six months' time from the time that it's gone through so that we can make a decision as to whether it needs to be further rectified at that point. Through you, Madam Mayor and Councillor, absolutely we can do that. Hey, uh, do you wish to make the motion and then with, uh, I think staff can take your point as direction. Would you wish to make the motion, uh, Councillor Ross? Uh, yes, please. Um, the motion in regards to Platten Boulevard, Master and Pine yeah, Gate Yeah, one, two, Road. three, and four. Please. Okay, sure. thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Kiesabry? Any other questions or comments? Councillor McDougall? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a question on, um, if I might, on Mass Road, or should we talk about that separately? Yep. Um, through uh, you, Madam Mayor, to Director Coleman, what's the speed on Ashburn Road posted as? Uh, just give me a moment. Thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor. So this posted speed limit varies on Ashburn roads. There are sections that are 60 kilometers an hour and a section that's 80 kilometers an hour. Okay, anything further, Councillor McDougall? Um, well, I'm just looking at all these. So we're going, we're looking at posting Pine Gate, Mast, um, both ends. So there'll be several signs for speeds posted on these roads, I assume? That's correct. Is there a way for us to get around posting all these signs on these roads, or like, or do we just have to post each road individually, rural? Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, the only way that you could get around that would be to set one default speed limit for the entire township and post that on all entrances to the township. Is there any other municipalities that have done that, through you, Madam Mayor? Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, I'm not aware of any that have set the entire municipality different than what the Highway Traffic Act says. Um, the Highway Traffic Act says that if you were a township in the early 2000s, your default for rural areas is 80 kilometers an hour and your default for built up areas is 50 kilometers per hour. In other municipalities like the one south of us that aren't townships, the default for every road is 50 kilometers an hour unless it's signed otherwise. So for, through you, Madam Mayor, so for Oshawa and Whitby, that's what they've done in their municipalities? That they, through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, yes, they're going in accordance with the Highway Traffic Act at 50 kilometers an hour. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Anything further? Do I have a second or yes, I do. Nothing further? All those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Okay. The uh, exercise of delegated authorities, 9.2.5, page 32, Councillor Roth. Once again, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, comment on this and something I'd like to see come forward is not um, a comment, it's a comment on the policy and not on the spending from this summer. So the items, the multiple items that are up here from the Waterfront Action Plan to Alder Drive, my comments aren't in relation to this. Um, the policy, um, of the delegated authority of spending greater than $50,000 was a policy that was passed by the previous administration. And I feel that um, what I'd like to see is that this policy come forth again, either for the editing or endorsement by this council. Um, I think oversight is, to have public oversight on high spending is what is very important, something that we hold dear, and that's why we're all here. And um, 
as, again, as I say, either to be endorsed by this council or to be edited. Um, I'd like to see that come forth before the next, uh, the next break, which would be the January, December period when we're off. Um, as a policy review. Mr. CAO, do you, can you tell me how long that policy's been in place? It's, I think it's been quite a while. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, probably you would be better. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. This policy was passed in March of this year. This council passed this policy. Just to confirm that this, the fifty thousand dollar was on June twenty fifth, twenty eighteen, is when I found it. When the last council, you're saying that we further, we've already endorsed such a policy this year. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to Council. Uh, the bylaw to adopt the delegation of powers and duties policy for Township of Scugog was adopted on the 25th day of March 2019. And does that policy speak to the spending limit? Uh, that is correct. Through you, Madam Mayor, um, the exercise delegation of authority speaks to the times when the procurement policy, um, when council is not in session. Mm -hmm. So during the summer recess, during election period recess, that's when the delegation of authority comes forward. We have a procurement policy and procurement bylaw that we follow that identifies the thresholds and things. And that was just passed last year. So, yeah. uh, when you say last year being 2018? I believe so, yes. OK. Um, Okay, um, obviously I need to look into this a bit more in relation to the policies. The intention was that at the $50,000 limit, which looking back when I first saw it come up was the June 25th council meeting of 2018, uh, which is the last session that they sat when they reviewing just reviewing the records on and file these. The talk around the council table was about the amount um, the underlying principle that I have with this issue is that public oversight of large pur purchases is, is encouraged, I think, at all times. Um, and like I said, I think it's important that that's a policy from my understanding. And then if we've passed it, I'll review that. And I apologize for taking up your time. But um, I think that's something that we need to endorse or to edit and speak about, speak to. Um, I think our CAO would like to speak to that. And then if you've got something further. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, just in terms of the oversight, I uh, just want to assure Council that proper oversight is being provided. And first of all, um, any expenditures that are made in the capital budget or the operating budget are approved by Council. So Council have, have approved these uh, expenditures. And in particular, the vast majority, highest percentage, um, of 50,000 and under our capital projects. The capital project would, council would have saw a full justification sheet explaining the expenditure, where the funds were going to be coming from, and have already approved that expenditure. Uh, so that's council's oversight on those smaller dollar amounts. Um, in addition to that, at any time, if council had an, a question of uh, any expenditure, of any amount, we'd be pleased to answer that question for you and provide you with whatever information you wanted with respect to that expenditure. The procurement bylaw and the thresholds that were established were meant to streamline the process, make it more flexible, keeping into accounting, having due regard for oversight and, and, and making sure that the uh, expenditures are being done in a very uh, controlled and accountable way. I guess in addition to that, I would say that um, uh, it would be more timely than having to come to council uh, for every expenditure. I Thank you, Mayor. Getting, getting the business done at the township. Yeah, and, and uh, that's really what I meant with the streamlining part. There are certain expenditures that are that you know we can just move forward with. There are less than fifty thousand. They've already been approved by council in the budget, and it just makes the process run smoother. Okay. As I said, be happy to answer any questions any member of council had on any expenditure. Thank you, Mr. CIO. I, through you, Madam Mayor, I, I just stress I'm not questioning any of the that's gone forward. But I think that 
the, the balance between streamlining, and I understand that we are not sitting during the summer months or January, December, and that business does carry on, but, um, and that these have been approved, but there is public accountability towards certain matters, and as we've seen, and can, we can talk about issues that are mundane in nature perhaps for a long time and have opinions on them. So I think that, again, I'll make sure that I have the policy correct, but um, that that should be approved by this council. Moving forward. Um, so just thank you for bringing that forward. Um, it is off of this um, um, report. However, I'm going to ask our clerk to clarify what exactly is in the procurement policy. It's uh, just a so for your information, and then maybe you could have this discussion with uh, the director of finance and the CAO and whoever else you feel to answer your questions and clarify things for you. But I'll let you do this right now. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to clarify that the delegation of authority by law was passed on the 20th day of March 2019, but the procurement by law was passed the 25th day of June 2018. So I think that's what you're referring to, mm -hmm. is the procurement by law, um, whereas I heard delegation authority by law, which is what that's for. So just to clarify. Thank you. I think, yeah, I obviously misspoke then, right? Okay, procurement okay. by law. Okay, so are you um, willing to make the motion on that report on the uh, delegation of authority? 9.2.5 on page 32? Yes, I'll make the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Council, uh, seconded by Councillor Guido. Questions or comments on that report? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Building permit activity, that was one that uh, we. Um, dealt with uh, earlier, uh, 9.2.7, um, the risk management and insurance renewal, and uh, that was pulled by Councillor Watton. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and if I could, I'd just like to ask Director Valentin to speak to the need and the cost of the cyber um, insurance. Before you answer that, it's on page 57, for those who are following along. Thank you. Director? Uh, you, Madam Mayor. Um, my report is just really an information report as we are part of the Durham Municipal Insurance Pool. I do feel that we get, for the Township of Skuga, good value as being part of that insurance pool. What had happened a couple of years ago is the cyber insurance was part of our regular uh, um, insurance package, but with the incurrence of more and more cyber activity happening, the insurance industry decided to split that from our regular insurance. And as a result, um, all the municipalities had to apply for the cyber insurance separately. Uh, so we went uh, forward with that process as well, uh, based on the increase in the cyber attacks that were happening, especially now in the municipalities. We've seen it at these um, in Midland and Wasaga Beach that have been uh, victims of the cyber attacks. So as part of this, we did have to go through a cyber uh, application, but it actually, for our benefit, we had two audits that were also done. There was a privacy audit and a security audit that needed to be done that en enables um, the, the insurance, who we're getting the insurance from, to be comfortable that we do have the proper things in, in place. So I have been working with our IT manager to ensure that we do have proper security in place. And I do think that it is actually good value for money in, in seeing what these other municipalities have had to pay. Um, I believe that Wasaga Beach had to pay $35,000 to get access back to their system. And I believe that um, prompted Midland to actually increase their insurance, but they still had to pay $250,000. So our $9,000 insurance premium, I think, is is kind of mini, you know, minimal to what we could be exposed to. Uh, thank you. And this was a huge topic um, during the AMO conference um, in encouraging us uh, in the strongest of ways to uh, make sure we have cyber insurance. And did you want to add anything to our own um, the things that we have in place through our IT manager? We were talking about it earlier, so. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and just for Council's information to add to it, is uh, when we did do the audit that the Treasurer mentioned, uh, we did score uh, quite high on that audit, so we are in a good uh, position cyber-wise. Uh, there was one or two things that were not um, 
up to scratch and I know at least one of those have been addressed over the summer break with uh, our summer IT student was able to rectify one of those so that has brought the score up even even better so just to let everyone know we are in a good position that way not invulnerable because no one is but we are in a good good shape thank you for that that makes us all feel better Councillor Brown uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I just, I'm just curious, would we have any idea how many cyber attacks or attempts at cyber attacking there would be in a municipality like this? No such information divulged? Madam Mayor, no, I, I wouldn't know. You only really hear about them when they get publicized in the newspaper. So, and just subsequent, so you don't hear them knocking on the door or anything, you don't, you don't know? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Do you want Thank to speak you. to that? Yeah, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and through you to uh, Council. Just on the number of attacks, um, I know that our IT manager can uh, pull some data on that for our system in terms of possible threats that have you know, come through our system. Uh, as a result of some of the threats, certain places and things have been done, certain locations have been blocked for receiving um, things. So yeah, we, we, could, we could give you some data on that if you were interested in, to us specifically. Like the treasurer said, other than that, you hear about them if they make the news. Thank you, anything further? Okay, uh, Councillor Watton, did you want to make the motion um, that the report be received? Sure. Thank you. A seconder, please. Councillor Guido, questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, uh, 9.2.8, page 61, capital closing report. Um, who pulled that? No, it was already no, it was dealt passed. with. Sorry. It was already dealt with. All right, what do we got now? Um, Ms. Uh, Councillor Brown, 9.3.1, um, the is, this is under correspondence and um, it has to do with reducing litter and waste in our communities. You've asked for this to be brought forward. This was an information um, letter that came to us over the summer, as most of these are, probably all of them are, and that uh, councillors have asked to um, to deal with it um, on a future agenda. So, uh, Councillor Brown, uh, do you want to uh, make the motion to endorse? Yes, Madam Mayor. Okay, is there, do you have any comments on this? This is about reducing litter and waste in our communities. Page 65. Uh, yeah, I, I have it here, uh, uh, Madam Mayor. I'm just, I, I can read it for the edification of everybody who doesn't have it up, but uh, that's entirely up to you, whether you think it's appropriate. Just the highlights of that. Well, I'll just go with this then. Be it therefore resolved that the Council of the Town of Georgina call upon the Province of Ontario through the discussion paper reducing litter and waste in our communities to review and implement a deposit slash return program for all single use plastic, aluminum and metal drink containers. Be it further resolved that the Province of Ontario review current producer requirements and look for extended producer responsibility for all packaging and be it further resolved that a copy of this motion be sent to the Minister of Environment the Premier, the Minister of Municipal Affairs, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, the Region of York, and all municipalities in the province of Ontario. Thank you. Seconder? Councillor Ross, questions or comments on the letter um, and endorsing? I have a question, Councillor Watton? All those in favour then? And that's carried. Thank you. 9.3.2, uh, Councillor Kiesebrink, and this has to do with the uh, a resolution from the Township of Warwick uh, advise, uh, regarding enforcement for safety on family farms on page 66. Councillor Kiesebrink, are you wishing to make a motion to endorse? Yes, thank you. Okay, did you want to give any background? Um, just that we are, and we have a lot of um, agricultural um, operations and as more, you know, urban um, connections with our agricultural uh, communities there could be some misconceptions and education that needs to be there and we do want to make sure that we're protecting our our farms thank you we've had a number of uh, letters from different municipalities um, endorsing this um, this very motion um, we can let me see that's on page 66 and uh, the be it resolved that the township the corporation of the township wart requests that honorable Doug Downey work for with his fellow MPPs and the agricultural leaders to find a better way forward to ensure stronger enforcement of existing laws or new legislation to ensure the safety of Ontario farms, Ontario's farm families, employees, and animals. And further resolve that this motion be circulated to the Honourable Doug Downey, 
Minister of the Attorney General, Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, Honourable Sylvia Jones, Solicitor General, and Honorary Ernie Hardman, Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, and all municipalities in the province of Ontario. Motion to endorse uh, by Councillor Keysbrink. I have a seconder, please. Councillor Brown, questions or comments? All those in favour? And that's carried, thank you. And uh, the next uh, item is 9.3.3, and I asked for that to be uh, pulled and uh, dealt with. It's on page 68. And uh, it has to do with uh, regarding the elimination of the 412 tolls and release of employment lands. Um, east, or uh, sorry, west of Toronto, all of the 400 series do not have, except for 407, do not have uh, tolls. This is a significant uh, hardship on, on uh, anybody that lives and works um, east of Toronto. And um, it is the stand of the region of Durham that, uh, and many municipalities within the region of Durham, if not all of them, that uh, we petition the um, the, federal, the uh, provincial government to reduce or uh, eliminate um, the tolls. Um, the roads, uh, consequently, are not used to their capacity, and therefore um, all of the other north-south roads um, are congested uh, because these aren't used, and primarily, I think, because of the tolls. So um, I would ask somebody to make the motion to endorse, and uh, look for a second there. Councillor Guido makes the motion to endorse, and Councillor Kiesebrink to second. Uh, any questions or comments on that? All those in favour? And that's carried, thank you. Um, 9.3.4 um, uh, is a conflict of interest by Councillor Brown, and it has to do with uh, LMUCO retail cannabis stores. That's on page 70. Um, let me see. Any questions or comments on endorsing this, or what is your wish? Anybody wish to make a motion to endorse? I know I pulled it, so. So they're asking that um, large urban mayors uh, of the Caucus of Ontario recommends that additional local regulatory controls be approved by the province of Ontario around retail cannabis stores that would A, provide a municipality with the unrestricted ability to control the location of retail cannabis stores through zoning, and B, in the alternative to A, Number one, limit the concentration and number of cannabis retail stores in any one municipality by introducing a minimum distance separation measure between retail stores, a minimum of 500 meters, and two, that cannabis stores be restricted to a commercial zone or area which permits retail stores, and three, clearly defining sensitive land uses in addition to schools which would be impacted by having a retail cannabis store located adjacent to them. Such other sensitive land uses would include, but not be limited to, daycares, colleges and universities, community centres, nursing homes, libraries, and actively programmed municipal parks. And four, that the current minimum distance separation of 150 metres from a cannabis retail store to a school be increased to a minimum of 500 metres from any sensitive land use to be defined as noted in paragraph three above and C that all municipalities that have approved retail cannabis stores to be located in their jurisdiction receive 50% of all excise tax collected by the province of Ontario on the sale of cannabis not limited to revenues in excess of 100 million dollars. I think that's kind of self-explanatory that we're looking for more safety measures um, in the, um, the location of cannabis stores, safety measures for our public and particularly our youth and um, and also um, the municipalities um, are getting the brunt of the expenses through police costs uh, social services costs health costs and um, that's why they, they are suggesting that um, that we proceed 50% of all excise taxes not just that in um, in excess of a hundred million dollars um, any questions on that um, uh, Mr. CAO, do you have any comments on it at all? Um, no, Madam Mayor, other than uh, this would provide more flexibility for uh, 
each municipality to control the location. Questions or comments? I, I would like. I'm looking for somebody to make the motion. Councillor Watton, uh, Councillor uh, Tiserbrink uh, seconded it. Are there any questions or comments on it? All those in favor? All those in favor? Hands up. Okay, and that's carried. Oh yeah, that's right. You have a conflict. And uh, nine point three. Point five, which is um, the Go East Extension Update and Transit Oriented Development Evaluation. Um, I've pulled that as well. Um, I've, there's an extensive report from the region on this. Um, essentially what has happened is um, for the last 10 years, a, a large amount of money and study um, has been done on uh, the Go East extension to Bowmanville in a particular location. And um, now it appears that they want to revisit that um, when uh, official plan amendments, um, all kinds of um, industries have expressed an interest in the location that was proposed for 10 years and uh, now they're changing it. So I, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to read this extensive background material um, so um, I'll ask for uh, someone to move to endorse Councillor Kieserbrink, a seconder, Councillor Watton. Um, are there any questions or comments on this? And Councillor Watton or myself can probably answer that because it's been through the region as well. Any questions or comments? Clearly understood on that huge report. Okay, uh, all those in favor? I guess that's carried, thank you very much. Okay, uh, 9.3.6 and 0.7 has been pulled by myself and uh, Councillor Kieserbrink pulled, um, pulled 9.3.6. Um, the 9.3.7 is really kind of specific to Brock, um, but both of those pieces of correspondence um, deal with the same thing and it's um, about the regional um, rationalization. I have um, put before you um, some some um, alternative wording that makes it more generic and not specific to to Brock or any other municipality and uh, more specific to us. If uh, so, uh, Councillor Kiesebrink, you pulled nine point three point six. Um, you can uh, you know you can make a motion to um, endorse the new wording if you would like. Um, or if you have any background information or comments to make. You'd like to make this motion? Okay, uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Ross. Questions or comments on the motion? I have to read it for the audience. Thank you. Okay, maybe Councillor Keesbrink, you'd like to read it because it's your motion. Whereas the Government of Ontario is undertaking a regional government review to examine governance, decision-making, and service delivery functions of Ontario's eight regional municipalities, Simcoe County, and all respective lower-tier municipalities, and whereas the special advisors have included within the scope of their review consideration of moving to single-tier municipalities or amalgamating existing municipalities, and whereas the Regional Governance Review Terms of Reference for Special Advisors Michael Fenn and Ken Sealing states that all materials produced by Special Advisors, including research analysis reports and recommendations, are the exclusive property of the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing and may be released publicly at the discretion of the Ministry, and whereas the Regional Governance Review must be transparent in the interests of accountability and in consideration of the potential impacts to local and regional municipal governments and the communities they serve. And whereas the Association of Municipal Managers, Clerks and Treasurers of Ontario, AMCTO, has requested that the report of the Special Advisors to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing containing the findings and recommendations be made public. And now therefore be it resolved that the Township of Scugog endorse AMCTO's position and request that the report prepared by the special advisors regarding the regional governance review be publicly released immediately upon its completion and presentation to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing and that this resolution be circulated to all Durham Region municipalities, the Region of Durham, Minister Steve Clark, and all Durham Region MPPs. Um, Councillor Keesbrink, uh, you've made that motion. Would you like to add that we receive uh, 
9.3.6 and 9.3.7. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, is that okay with the seconder, Councillor Roth? Okay, questions or comments on that uh, motion? All those in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. No notices of motion, no new business. Uh, we've had our closed session. I now would entertain a motion to adjourn. Councillor Guido, seconded by Councillor Ross. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Notice I didn't say any questions or comments. <laughs> Great meeting. Um, a lot of business done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job.